one, two, check, check, one, two. All right, looks like we have sound. Looks like we're streaming. Good morning, everybody. I'm Lucienne from Calvin Chen's Martial Arts Academy. Uh, we thank you for joining us once again. Uh, this is beginner, intermediate, uh, Honga Kung Fu class. Um, and uh, we're going to do a series of warm-up exercises. We're going to do uh, some punches, some kicks. Uh, and then we're going to do a drill called the traditional five stances that we do here at Calvin Chen's Martial Arts Academy. And we are also going to do the first form, Moi Fakun, the Plum Flower Fist Set. And then actually, Sifu is going to come in, and he'll uh, he'll take things a bit further for you. Um, this is an all ages class, and again, beginner through intermediate level. Um, also, I did want to thank uh, Sifu Irene Yao uh, from Calvin Chin's Martial Arts Academy. Um, we're trying to expand our footprint and kind of reach a wider audience worldwide. And uh, Irene was really helpful in setting up. We now have a, a channel on Roku TV. So if you search for either Learn Kung Fu Now or you search for Calvin Chin's Martial Arts Academy, that should come up. Uh, all of the live events that we're streaming should go there, as well as all of the past events and some archive stuff. So it should be pretty good content, and you can just access that from your Roku TV if you already have one. All right, with that being said, uh, we'll go feet shoulder width, nice big hoop, and we turn. One, two, three, one, two. Three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, and three. Reaching over, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one. Two, three, one, two, and three. Stretching gently towards the floor. One, two, three, to your right. Two, three, to your left. Two, three, middle one time. Inhale and exhale. And again, one, two, three. To your right, two, 
three, to your left, two, three, middle once, inhale, and exhale. And again, one, two, three, to your right, two, three, to your left, two, three, middle one time, inhale, and through the nose, exhale. Good. <clears throat> Hands on the waist, excuse me. Make a circle with the waist. Keep your head and your feet relatively still. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, one, and two. We switch. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, one, and two. We're going to cross our arms, place the hands on the knees that are bent, gentle circle with the knees. One, trying to keep the feet flat. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, one, and two. Switch hands, switch directions. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, one, and two. Hands on the waist, turning the head side to side. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, one, and two. Back and forth. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, Ten. One and two. Tilting. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One and two. Rotation looking all the way around. One, two, three. We switch. One. You want to be nice and gentle with your neck. Two, don't force it. Three. Very good. Opening up the feet. Arms out. Turn the head. The body's going to follow. Scan the room with your eyes. Let everything else relax. And you're going to try to look behind you. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, two, three. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, two, three, and four. Turning to your right, straight the straight back, straight up and down, vertical spine. Heel of your left foot is off the floor and stretch. One, two, three, switch. One. Two, three, switch. One, two, three, switch. One, two, and three. Both feet flat. Right leg is straight out. And we switch. And we switch, this time toe up. And we switch, toe up. And we stand up, turn to your right. Both legs straight, bending at the waist. And switch. 
to your left. To the middle. Let's bring the feet in, toes out, hands together, elbows against the knees. We're going to push out, opening the hip. We sit, both feet together, butterfly position. Okay, right leg out, stretch towards your right foot. Switch, stretch towards your left. Both feet out, we bounce, switch, get a little hip rotation. And one, two, three, we're up. Okay, ready position, feet about one and a half of your foot's width apart, hands at your sides, most important part of ready position is the eyes, our eyes are focused and alert and staring straight ahead. We make fists, raise them up, bend the knees, heels out, toes out, heels out, and lastly toes out with your feet parallel, feet flat, bending the knees, Back is straight, body's relaxed. We're going to do ping choi. It's a reverse or a flat punch. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, two, closing. One, two, low block press. One, two, three, four, five, six, Seven, eight, nine, ten. One, two, closing. One, two, middle block. Come across the body, stopping at the shoulder. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, two, closing. One, two, high block. We come up the middle. Lift. Make sure you have the wrist lined up on the center of the body. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One and two. Closing. One, two. Lean one, sam sick. All three. One, two, 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 and three. Closing. One, two. Low block with a punch. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, and two. Closing. One, Two, middle block with a punch. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, and two, closing. One, two, high block with a punch. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, Two, closing, one, two, Danji Kyosu, pull it back, push out to the sides, one, two, three, four, five, and six, going low, one, two, three, Four, five, and 
and six. Going high. One. Two. Three. Four. Five. And six. Last set. Shoulder width, shoulder height. One. Two. Three. Four. Five. And six. Thrust, flip, roll, press. Thrust, flip, roll, press. Thrust, flip, roll, press, and close. One, two. Closing the feet. One, two, three, four. Shake it out. Very good. Deep breathing. Palms up, elbows down. Inhale. And exhale. Inhale and exhale. Inhale and exhale. Okay, moving on to punches. Feet shoulder width. Knees slightly bent. Left hand on the waist. Keep in mind I'm doing your image. Right fist up in the center. With Detroit. Punch. Okay, stop, switch. You may have heard me say before, punch. In these uh, live stream classes, you can do as many of these as you like. Probably the more the better, uh, within reason. But the reality is we only have so much time in a class, so we kind of go through it and move forward. Okay, stop, to the side, punch. Same punch, but to the side. Keep the body to the front. The head turns to the side and the punch goes to the side. You want to keep that punch lined up on the body. You don't want your punch to be over here or over here. I should do this facing the camera. So this is what you're looking for, alignment of your arm with your body, then it's supported. So if I'm over here, nothing in that direction, nothing in this direction. I need to be lined up directly with that punch. Let's switch to the left and punch. Okay, stop. Both fists up by the ears. Hirachoi. Alternating punch at a 45 degree angle. Remember to turn the waist and the body, but don't turn your head. You don't want to lose sight of your opponent. Okay, stop. Binachoi, edge of the fist, punch. Okay, stop, switch, punch. Very good. Stop, chelan choi, cartwheel punch. This is a circular punch, one fist going over the top. Okay, fist lines up with the elbow, and one follows the other. Keep it nice and relaxed. You don't want a lot of muscular tension holding you up. Just let it go. Okay, stop. Quattroy, back of the fist, and punch. Okay, switch, punch. Very good. So for the last set of punches here, normally I've been doing Tilbo Tanachoi facing you, but because we have the mirror, hopefully you'll be able to see in the mirror, we're going to put our left foot forward, lightly touching like a cat. We call it a cat stance. Left hand on top. When we switch our feet, make sure that you don't put your weight on your front foot or step into it. Just lightly touch and punch. So here we go. Switch, 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 and switch. Good. Deep breathing. Inhale and exhale. 
Inhale and exhale. Inhale and exhale. Very good. All right. So next up, left foot forward. You want to be in a leaning stance. Your front knee is bent over the toe. Your back leg is straight. Okay, so left foot forward, left hand up. Punch, toe out, lift the knee, kick with the toe, step back, and punch. That's one, two, three, four, five, six, stop, switch, one, two, three, four, five, and six. Good. Switch. Kicking with the right leg again. Same thing, but we're going to push out with the heel this time. One, two, three, four, five, and six. Stop. Switch. So same thing with the punches as with the punches. You can certainly do more of these kicks in your own practice, just for uh, the sake of brevity here. We're going to uh, keep it to six each. One, two, three, four, five, and six. Good. Switch. Right leg again. This time, straight leg kick. Chun Sum Hoi. Swing straight up, come straight back. Not going to bend the knee of the leg that's kicking. One, two, three, four, five, and six. Let's switch. Kicking with the left leg, same kick. One, two, three, four, five, and six. Good. Let's switch. Okay, last kick we're going to do today is a round kick. By the way, it's not that we don't have other kicks. Obviously, we have a bunch of side kicks. Um, we have uh, a whole series of crescent kicks, all kinds of kicks, but uh, just for the sake of the length of the class, this is kind of our standard kicking routine that we run through, and so that's what we're doing today. We're running these live classes exactly as you would experience the live class at the school. So here we go. Punch, toe out, round kick. And back. This one's waist high. Two, three, four, five, and six. Let's switch. One, two, three, four, five, and six. Good. Deep breathing. Inhale. And exhale. Again, inhale and exhale. Inhale and exhale. Very good. All right, next up we're going to do five stances. We're going to do our traditional five stances drill that we do here at Calvin Chen's Martial Arts Academy in four directions. So all the movements are going to repeat uh, since I'm not at the board to uh, edit as I normally do when Sifu's up here. Um, We'll have to count on the mirrors, and I'll adjust my stepping to try to stay in frame of this front camera, which is the only camera kind of picking things up at this time. Uh, and then after that, we're going to go through Moi Fakun, the Plum Flower Fist Set, and then again, see if we will come back, and, and uh, you'll be in good hands there as well. Okay, so here we go. We're going to face this direction to start. Ready position, we make fists, elbows back. Raise the hands to the chest, drop the elbows, and push out. Palms up, make fists, pull. Danji Kyosu, open, push, pull, push, pull, push, lift, that's elbow stroke, press, thrust, press, and big hoop. Okay, right fist on top. Bend the knees, step out, offset horse stance. So toe to heel, draw the bow. Sliding step, leaning stance, punch. I'm going to adjust my step so I don't step out of frame, but you would step all the way through, left hand underneath, 
pull your elbow back, and punch. Toe out, big cross step, make a hoop, turn, dragon whips tail. Pivot out, again offset horse stance, corner back fist to the head. Make a circle, chung. Step up, suspended, punch. Step straight back, cover. High block, low block. Left knee up, drop and chop. Step up, uppercut, and we close. Right fist on top, stepping out, offset horse stance, toe to heel, chun. Sliding step, punch. Left hand underneath, step all the way through, pull back, punch. Toe out, big cross step, dragon whips tail. Spin out, corner back fist to the head, make a circle, chun. Step up, punch. Step straight back, cover. High block, low block, left knee up. Drop and chop. Step up, uppercut. Close. We're going to the left. Right fist on top. Offset horse stance, chun. Sliding step, punch. Again, I'll switch my feet just to stay in frame, but you would step all the way through. Left hand underneath, we're going to remove as we elbow behind. Turn your waist, punch. Toe out, big cross step. Make sure you get your weight predominantly on your right leg. The left heel should be off the ground. You turn, dragon whips tail. Spin out, corner back fist to the head. Make a circle, step up suspended, punch. Step straight back, high block, low block, left knee up, chop, uppercut. Close, right fist on top. I'm gonna move just so the camera can still pick it up. Step out, offset horse stance, chun. Sliding step, punch. Left hand underneath, step all the way through. Elbow back, punch. Toe out, big cross step, dragon whips tail. Spin out, corner back fist to the head, make a circle, chun. Step up, punch. Step straight back, high block, low block, leaning stance. Left knee up, chop. Uppercut, and we close. So just a couple of things um, for some of our students, especially our kids, um, some of our younger students. One of the biggest challenges is getting your footwork right. And so this is why we start with this drill. Um, when you step out to an offset horse stance, if I start with my feet together, I don't want to just step out and then pull this foot back because it's like a pivot in basketball. If you have the ball, if you're going to pivot on this foot, you don't leave that foot there. You have to release that foot so it can pivot with you. And that's essentially what happens here. We step out, we line up the toe and heel, and then we adjust both feet so they're still parallel, but they're not facing that original front direction. Okay, when we go to leaning stance, you don't want to let your heel out because you kind of lose the strength and also the distance. You lose forward momentum if you let your heel out. You want to turn into it, heel and toe, and it comes forward, okay? So these are just a couple of tips for that. Um, next, we're going to do Muay Fako in the Plum Flower Fist. And again, then see if we will come in and you'll be in certainly good hands. All right, ready position. Make fists, raise them up, salute. Step straight back, feet together, we close. Bend the knees, step out, offset horse stance, high block, low block. Pull your foot back half the distance of your stance. Cross stance, cross block. Step out, right hand middle, chunk heel, dragon. Right fist on top, step straight back, scoop. Step up, press, uppercut. Left hand on top, remove. Step forward, leaning stance to offset horse stance for your punch. Now we're going to go squatting stance. Step out, uppercut, remove. Step up, punch. Toe out, cat stance. Step out, cross block, turn to the rear. Drunken punch. Whoop, just knocked my mic off. Sorry. So we have drunken punch. 
Left hand underneath, remove, high block. Step up, punch. Squatting. Uppercut. Sliding step, punch. Squatting. Elbow up, suspended, press. Lift, cut. Double palm strike, remove. Punch. Toe out, step up, come across. Elbow. Low back fist, palm strike. High block, outside crescent, hop kick, press, trap. Back fist, remove. Step up, punch. Right fist on top. Sliding step, palm strike. Pull your foot back, scoop. Press, kick, punch. Dragon, right fist on top. Turn, punch. Middle block, salute. Okay, so uh, one thing for those of you that are Hong Kong practitioners, Hong Kong practitioners that know Moi Fakon, um, that is a slightly abbreviated version. We don't do the full version on all four sides, um, mostly because this is the first form that we teach. Uh, later, after the students have learned that form, we certainly can add those wings back in. Um, but if you know that form, you know that this whole section where we go squatting, uppercut, the drunken punch, all of that repeats, not only on this side, but on this side, and then after the trap back fist on this side before we go back to this side. So anyway, hopefully that was helpful. Uh, and again, here comes uh, Sifu, and he'll, uh, he'll take over, and I'll go back to the mixing board. Yep. Okay. Hi, everyone. Okay, you want to get your quick drink, and then we'll resume with the second form, and then we'll work a little bit on the third form and see where we, how far we can get. Okay. So if everyone's back, we're going to begin with the first, second form. Hands here, ready? One. Two. So we're just going to each of the postures. Ready? One, two, three. One, two, three. Remember, work your stances, work the position. That's your posture. Scoop, press, remember the knee up, kick, and punch. One, two, three. One, diagonal strike. Lift, elbow, drag it. Cross step. One, two, three. Let me, you have to connect those two. One, two, three. Jump back, cross, open, chop. Twist, kick. One, two, step. Sliding step, punch. Over the top, step up, elbow, straight down, back fist. Change directions. One, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four. Thing is, when you go through your forms, don't rush. Take your time. Finish the position. One, two. Stance. Cross. Horse. Lean. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. 
and close. Okay, good. So what's important is coordination. When the hands work with the legs, then you kind of build that idea that the hands work with the legs. So the stance work is harder to develop. We can do the hands pretty easily, but even then, we don't know exactly what we should be doing. So <clears throat> you know, when it comes to the hand movements, always reference, meaning that if I do a high block, it's for this space, middle block is in this space, and then low is about here. We don't go below that with our arms, because when we start to go below this point, then we're starting to reach. If we go above this point, we're starting to reach. If we go beyond this point, over here, we start to reach. We can go to the side because we're, even then it's bent here. When we do this, it might be striking out to get range of motion, but if you're blocking, you don't overreach, okay? So with defensive mechanisms or defensive type techniques, we stay within the realm of our space because that's what you're protecting. When it comes to striking, if you have to go beyond a certain point, what do you think you have to do? You would have to take a step, okay? So what kind of footwork do we have? We have sliding step. If it's even further than that, you have step through, okay? So stepping through gives you twice as much distance. Half step gives you a small gain in distance, and that's what you're actually learning to do, how to sort of close like if I'm here and you see this red dot on the floor, if I take a step, I'm here, okay? If I need that step, when I turn out and I step through, now I'm on top of the dot, and if I take a step, so then you cover more space. Now using that dot as a reference, if I want to move over to here, and then come over to here, or over here, that's actually a zigzag step. So what's a zigzag step? When we go like this, and like this, and like this, like this, this is zigzag. This is a zigzag step. So it looks, looks like you're going like this, okay? Or if I step here, and then I turn here, step here, and I turn here, that's a side step, and a, that's like a turning the corner. So if I walk over here, then I turn over to here, and I walk over here and turn over here, that's turning the corner. And the reason we do that is to move this way or this way so that we can go up and go up. So even though in the form we do this, we might be stepping to do this. Okay, so that's you know, the idea of what we, why we have to uh, move our feet. So we don't go through the form simply because you know, it's what we have to memorize. It's because we have to teach our body how to you know, respond and take us in certain directions. So your feet actually, you know, like in many of the other things that I teach, is like your steering wheel. It's taking you in a direction. If I'm going here, my feet will take me in that direction. If I want to go forward or backward, that's retreating. I can go back like this, or I can go back like this. So when you go back, you notice you have much more control. If I just walk backwards like this, then what you end, end up happening, you're going to be toppling over yourself eventually. But when you go like this, or I step back like this, or step forward like this, I have control of my advanced step and the retreating step because we're controlling what we call our center. We control our center because when I move, I want to be in balance. I don't want to just go like this because then you're sort of out of control. You don't know where you're going to actually land. So our footwork is very important. Okay, so that was the second form. We did, um, you know, uh, that, uh, that one time, but hopefully you can practice it more than once when you're viewing the video. Now, if we go to the third form, we have a different type of footwork where we're hopping, where we're hopping. One, two, three. Step through. So this, you're stepping through. Here's continuing forward and a back fist. When we turn like this, we pull. That's a backward step. There's a ginger knuckle, and we hop. So this is just avoiding. One, 
two, three, catch, stomp. So the hand comes down, uppercut, one, two, three. Okay, step through, grab, push, hook. This is hooking, elbow, elbow. So you see the body is turning, high, turn, this foot turns, drop. Hook, double elbow, out like this, one, two. So we went over a lot of this last time. The last time we went over this was more to show you the direction of movement. Okay, actually it should be on this side. Elbow, vertical elbow, punch, punch, punch. Here, sweep, 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 and return. So we did some drills that would take us to this position. Back fist, pull back, one, two, three, step through, punch, turn, one, two, three, four, five. Okay, so one of the things um, we went over is the jump kick and that, so forth, but if we're in this case, in this case, the vertical elbow, we turn to punch, one, two, three, four, right? So it's one, two, three. Elbow, punch, punch, punch. So these are short punches. It's not pulling back here. It's not coming from here. It's just in here. Okay, so we're here. One, uppercut. So we switch feet. Why would you switch feet? Because if I'm in this position and I'm too close to take a big step forward, but I, yet I want to use this hand as the uppercut, I have to switch and strike up. So when you switch, you want your hands to do this. But at the same time, you step up like this. So this hand is actually striking up. This hand is following up. Now from here, the most efficient thing is to do that. So I'm here, one, two, as a training for the footwork, and now this changes. This is coming like this, one, two, right? So from here, one, two, three, four, five, okay? So that's the hand move. One, two, three, four. So I keep this hand here, not like this. This is maybe for looks, but when you're doing this, this is more for when you hook and chop. Okay. So when we're here, one, two. Now when this chops, this foot comes like this. So your weight is still back here. When you sweep, I'm sweeping like this. Now this hand hooks left side. The first time we did it was like this, right? Now this time we're hooking like this. And then you have to back fist. So it's hook, back fist, cutting hand, okay? One, two, three. So it's not enough to just to do that, that. You have to control one, right? So we're here. Now from here, one, hook, back fist, pull back, hop. One, two, three, step, four. One, two. Okay, again, we're here. Punch, turn, cross, circle. So it's the same as this. You see, 
If you track the movement, it's the same. See, from here, from here, okay, so the difference is in the leg work. So in this, in this form, when we're here, okay, and I hop, and I'm, what I'm doing is, instead of stepping and doing this, I'm hopping, hopping. So that's what that is. You're jumping from side to side. Something comes here, you move. You move. You move. You move. Now, in this instance, instead of using a bridge to strike, where you connect and stay, because you're moving, you have to connect like this. So you, it's called weaving and bobbing or sidestepping. So avoiding, that's avoiding. When something comes here, you avoid. That's a step. Avoid, that's a little quicker. So that's just hopping. You're off this foot, and then you would follow up. Whereas when I'm here, and I step in like this, or step here and I move like this, that would be moving toward your opponent, turning the corner. So if you look at the pattern of movement, I step to here, and I step to here, step to here, and turn to here. That's essentially using your sliding step and your transitions, okay? So just reviewing that vertical elbow, one, one, two, three. Elbow, one, two, three. Next, uppercut, switch feet. So we're here, right? Switch. So that's a standard switch stance. Then we sweep. So this is essentially switching stances. Now you do three in this direction, then we turn. Then we do two. There's two. The third one is this. Then hook, back fist, cutting hand. Hook, back fist, cutting hand. So this is the left side. So a lot of people might have some trouble doing the left side because most of us have been learning the right side movements. So here, now cutting hand. Same as cutting hand or cutting hand, right? But this is more like this, and then you hop. One, two, thrust, punch, turn, close. Okay, you see how your body moves together. So if I'm here and I turn and I lean like this with double elbow, the hands come down, they lift up, and you time to finish. So we just did uh, a group of movements in the end of the form. So because it's recorded, you can take the piece that you want to work on and just build that sequence and then put it all together from the beginning and you can work it like that. All right, okay, deep breathing, inhale, Exhale, inhale, exhale. So up to this point, you've gone through three forms, and each one of them has very unique uh, movements in it, and a lot of them are pretty consistent. The first two forms actually is a uh, southern style. The, the Pregnantis form is a northern style. There's a little bit more agility of footwork there, but essentially, like I said, this was the mantis, this is the dragon. The mantis is an insect. It should be, you know, they should be quick when it moves. And then the other forms kind of have more foundation, mimicking, at least using the concept of five animals, the tiger, the crane, the leopard, the snake, and the dragon. So it uses those animals to reproduce some of the uh, ideas of how, you know, they, the animal would, would uh, use its movements as, as their own skill. So that, that's kind of why we do that. Then using it to identify a position as a dragon claw, you know, in different positions. So that just identifies it. The crane 
in the tiger crane form. We would do it, have the tiger, the strong movements, and the soft, gentle movements. So that's what the crane is. It's more of a bird movement. Then the snake is more slithering and entwining. So that's where the snake comes in. The leopard is quick and, and agile, and the dragon is a mystical beast, and we talk about their claws. So dragon flaps its tail, your movement is this. So it's just mimicking a movement that you would use like in the fourth form or five stances. Okay, going to the fourth form, it's more stationary. You have quite a bit of uh, foot adjustments in it. So when we step one, two, three, one, two, we see that we're back to this stance. We open, instead of pivoting, we use this footwork. That's to define a circle, a half step, and shifting the weight. One, two, three. One, two, three, four. So, so, so the geometry of position is important. Where is your hands in relationship to your body? Okay? We adjust trapping hand, cutting hand, palm strike, short punch, pivot. Back to center, one, two. Opposite side, trap, cutting hand. Short, there's a palm, short punch. Short punch means it's not like this. Then we turn back to center, one, two. So you notice I adjust my feet, one, two, three, four. All right, and we have the two punches, okay, or three punches. This one actually sets up, there's a block. One, two. So this is really a circular movement. So you see the circle here. This is part of that circle. So you see the foot, and you saw, theory, what you're doing is just t taking you in a direction, then you punch, okay? Now we're here. One, two, three, Press, four, curl, one, two to the chin. Remember the first two are high to the chin, not high this way. Chin, three times, one, two, three. Make sure you complete the stance because sometimes people are doing this. So that's not right. You have to pivot. So the, you know, the level of skill really begins to make a difference when you start to do this, right? So one, two, three, one, two, three. Okay, let's try that again, right? So we trap, oh, we're here. One, two, three, four, five. We go to the corner, we go to the corner, okay? It's not to the side, to the corner. One, two, three, and the hands just alternate. One, two, three. Poke, poke, poke. Pull back. Lift up. Pull back. Cross. Put your left hand on top. One, two, three, and four. Okay? One, two, three. Okay, so that's that series. Okay, let's review that again. Okay. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three. So that's a cover hand to the corners three times. One, two, three. Hook. One, two, three. Poke, poke, poke. Okay, so it's here to the eye. One, two, three. Back down. One, two. Now this is high, not here. Three. One, two, three, four. Okay, wrist. One, two, three, four. We step. Okay, so it's this, this, 
this to here. Horse stands, sliding step, double, stomp, poke to the throat, this hand on top, open, sliding step, punch, punch, staying in the leaning stance, not transitioning the horse. One of the few times that we don't turn to the horse stance when we, this side on top, open, sliding step, punch, turning, punch. Okay, step back, block, hook, uppercut, remove, step forward, punch, punch, turn, right, scoop, uppercut, remove, punch, punch. Okay, then we change directions again. Sliding step, punch. One, two. Now this is waist level. Three, four. Three times, one, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. Okay, center, center, separate. One, two. Okay, so you see every time your hand moves, there's something going on. It has some uh, application or a blending of, of your body to redirect or redirect. When the hand's here, you don't have to make a giant movement to do this. If the hand is here and I do this, that's already creating an action. In other words, if my hand is here and you put your hand there and I go like this, that already moved, that already shifted your technique. If I go like this, that already deflected the movement. It doesn't have to be banging. So this is where the softness of your movement makes a difference because the rigidness becomes anticipation and excessive. It's a waste of energy and, you know, sort of a, an anticipation that could be taking you beyond and leaving you exposed here. So the thing is, when you're here and you make a shift, your body and the body firm has to become part of that transition. And we're doing this all the time. When we're doing the punch, that's what's happening. So as a simple technique between the combination of one, two, three, four, five. That actually is one, two, three, one, two, three. So one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. That's really your body is, it's a timing mechanism to build your coordination and time your body so that it's moving in, in a relationship. And that relationship I talk about is your, how your right and left parts of your body how your hands and legs begin to synchronize, all of that is tied through your body as a body form. So that's what we get out of doing, uh, you know, sort of a systematized way of uh, creating techniques. Uh, it seems to be a lot of information when we're going through all these forms, and the reason for that is because it gives you a chance to develop, gives your brain a chance to begin to understand what all these movements start to, to become. Because basically, we have a cross stance, we have a sliding step, we have a cross step, we have a turn, one. So that's basically what we do when we move our legs. But you know, how do you get that to become a reaction? How do you get that to become a reflex? Well, you have to do it over and over again. Now, if you don't have a format to create the reflex action, creating you know, the, the concept over time, then you're kind of randomly doing it. And so what happens when you do things randomly, um, then it's always kind of sort of second guessing what's happening or thinking about what's going to happen next. So as creatures of habit, if you really want to develop reflex action, you have to do it to your body can respond you know, from an action. It's because your perception is something that happens when you're on a visual level or on a feeling level, right? So, so if something comes in and you touch, 
You don't have to see. You just know that you're attached. But without touching, you have to see. So when you see, where is it when you put your arm there? So by touching, feeling, and seeing, you can react and respond to the next position. So that's what actually happens when you're, you're training in the traditional arts. And that, that's a, an idea, but it's real. That's exactly how we learn things. We learn things through that and the sensitivity and the feeling of how that is. If you don't block and you don't know where the body form should be, then it's always going to be thinking, well, it's supposed to be here, but where is it? Where it is is the geometry of your position relative to the rest of your body. So that's why I reference. If I'm here, and I say in the corner, then if I'm facing this way, it's in the corner, it's in the corner. So it doesn't matter if I'm in this corner, it's here. So that position, so look at what happens. I'm going like this, going like this. So if you step up into the corner, you go like this before you pick, or you go like this and do a tiger, you, you have to already have learned this position. So when you go to do your forms, it becomes innate. You know where the next position is because your body has learned and referenced it over time. So what is it referencing? It's re referencing space. And what is space? Space is, you know, your body in a specific uh, place, you know, in a position. So that space is what we call proprioception. Proprioception is spatial awareness, knowing where your body is. That's why when you practice traditional arts, you develop what they call sometimes the sixth sense. Okay, so that, on that note, um, that's about time to uh, close this form, this session. Give us a thumbs up if you're finishing the third form. That's great. And, uh, you know, practice it before you go into, you know, some of the fourth form movements. Okay, see you next time.